So I uh, figured I'd start a little bit um, a little bit early, being as uh, you're all here and there's more of you than I thought would be here and uh, stuff. Um, so last time I had a microphone in my hand, um, I was dressed as a fairy in a gold lame leotard um, with fake, well, well, fake stuff, purple hair singing, hey, big spender. So uh, <laughs> I've got pictures, quick show of hand who wants to see what that looks like. You may, you may not recover. You let your fly in my room. <laughs> I'll be back for it later. <laughs> All right, that's enough. You don't want to. Uh, I'm sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> um, so my talk today is. Can I just try the other microphone because I kind of like to walk around a little bit so that you. Yeah. Shall we walk in? Oh, sorry. I'll try and turn it down a little bit. Uh, so my talk today is uh, social networking, special ops, extending uh, data visualization tools for faster pwnage. Um, I almost called it, um, you know, after Tom Ryan's talk at Black Hat, getting in bed with the Submeister, but um, I thought nobody would turn up to that. Um, so, okay, um, I'm going to rattle through quite a few slides um, pretty quickly. There's a ton of stuff uh, out on my website uh, in a white paper, so don't worry too much about the details, it's all in there. Uh, quick disclaimer, uh, if anybody does happen to know who I work for, uh, then this talk has got absolutely nothing to do uh, with that particular organization. I'm just talking here uh, by myself, for myself, and uh, well, you get the idea. Okay, so um, what are you in for? today. Um, first of all, I'll give you a quick intro to social network analysis and visualization. So I'm assuming a lot of people are already familiar with that sort of stuff. So that's going to go through really quickly. The details are in the white paper. I'm going to do a case study with uh, Twitter and a tool called Maltigo, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And then something a little bit darker using uh, Facebook and uh, Maltigo. So, okay. Uh, goals of the uh, presentation. want to leave people with an overview view uh, or appreciation of really what's happening in this field. I'm uh, no expert uh, in this sort of stuff, but there's plenty of people that are, so hopefully can generate some interest in this room and you can go off and play uh, with this yourselves. Um, I want to expose you to some of the ideas that you can imply in different contexts as well. So I'm talking about Twitter and Facebook, but as you'll see, you can apply this to just about anything that you want to look at in terms of visual representation. So um, quickly, who's the talk aimed at so that I don't waste anybody's time? Well, I might waste your time, but at least you know that's your decision then. Um, so um, on the left-hand side, you've got data visualization dudes, and on the bottom, you've got social network analysis dudes. So uh, if, like me, you fit into the uh, the noob category, um, this talk will probably be uh, pretty interesting to you. Um, if you fit into this category and you're a data visualization expert or a social network analysis expert, um, you may get something out of it. And uh, if you're there, then you probably already get it. Um, but stick around because I've got a free skateboard. Um, so, uh, who am I? Um, so, I, I don't know if it's the same for everybody else, but you know, when you sign up to Twitter, you look for a name, um, and that name's gone. So, my nickname at school uh, used to be Suggy, and everybody calls me Suggy back at home. Um, so, I look for Suggy, and somebody's got that. So, then I thought, well, I'll try the Sugginator because that's kind of rad. And um, somebody had got that as well. So, then I went for the Sugmeister, and there it was. And this is my favorite cup that. Uh, a friend got me for Christmas. Um, I don't know what they were trying to tell me. Um, by day I'm in corporate security. Uh, by night I do this sort of stuff, data analysis, visualization, watch TV. I didn't put that on there. I figured everyone does that. And uh, I attend DC 4420, one of the uh, DEF CON chapters. If you're not familiar with DEF CON chapters, go and take a look at them. Excellent source of uh, information. And um, a strange sequence of events led to me uh, appearing here, which I'll talk about shortly. So, okay, quick slide uh, here. Social network analysis, uh, target rich environment equals a problem or a, uh, an opportunity, depending how, on how you're sort of viewing it, really. Um, this dude here, Jacob uh, Marino, he's sort of credited with uh, being, if you like, the, the grandfather of social network analysis. And that sort of graph uh, first appeared in the New York Times in 1930. 
1953, um, and it's you know around the whole Gestalt psychology um, movement. Uh, but before then, you can you know you can date this stuff back to the Greeks, but um, you know they didn't really have uh, the same sort of computing power that we've got, so they were limited largely. Um, so target rich environment, real quick, um, as a Cisco report said there's 21 exabytes of data flowing around per month or something like that. There was another report that had a different figure but of personal content like photos and music and CV, uh, resumes, sorry, and you know that kind of stuff. Uh, before I got out here, um, I heard that Facebook had 500 million-ish users. Um, so, you know, Twitter, what was it, 100 million and so on. So there's a lot of people got their information out there. And then there was this thing I noticed, which was called sort of the, the privacy paradox, or what I termed the privacy paradox. There was a, um, a study by Stanford University, at least I think it was Stanford, where it might have been Carnegie, I can't remember now, it's in the white paper, um, where they interviewed a bunch of students. Um, and the students said, well, I take uh, security and privacy uh, seriously, especially with social networking. But when they actually then looked at their profiles uh, on these social networking sites, um, they were doing the exact opposite, um, which is kind of helpful. So 89% used their real names, 61 used, you know, identifiable pictures uh, and what have you. Um, and then finally, this is a really cool paper, especially if you've been trying to explain to your friends who say, well, I've got nothing to hide, I really don't mind. Um, they're probably not going to read this paper because it's quite a wedge, but maybe you can read it and just sort of summarize it for them. Um, I've got nothing to hide and other misunderstandings of privacy. So um, you can help them with this as well, but they say, well, my searches are anonymous. Um, I don't care that Google's correlating all my IP addresses, for example, if they, do, if they are. I don't know if they are. Um, but they're not all that anonymous. And uh, this lady here, Thelma Arnold, the New York Times, again, there's her name, um, got a bunch of search results from AOL and managed to figure out that, you know, this lady who was searching for, for dogs and stuff like that, dog grooming, uh, in, um, in Georgia was this lady called Tham Thelma Arnold, and her name didn't appear in it uh, at all. They were just able to track it back, and that was like in 2006 or something. So um, you can Google around for, for that if it interests you. The data is still out there, actually, so you can perform that sort of analysis yourself and see if you arrive at the same conclusion. So uh, opportunity, lots of data, lots of noise. Um, so how do you find the interesting stuff just a little bit quicker is really what this talk is about. Um, uh, by combining data mining, uh, screen scraping techniques, named entity recognition, meta crawling, and that sort of stuff, and visualization. Um, so a quick intro to some of the things that I'm going to talk about in the next two sections. Um, named entity recognition, or uh, NER, if you uh, look on Wikipedia, you'll see that this kind of definition here, parsing data to extract and classify information. Um, so... <laughs> Sweet, get up, man. <laughs> nice one, man. You want to come up here and say a few words? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All I gotta say is that ever since I was a kid, I've uh, enjoyed skateboarding, and in addition to being here and uh, enjoying this conference, but uh, this is this is absolutely beautiful. And I don't want to take up your time too much, but I really appreciate it, and thank you very much for the opportunity. I skate to create. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks very much. Nice one. <laughs> Dude was doing pretty good then, actually. If you want to come up and finish that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, completely at randomly, I chose this phrase. Uh, Greg bought 300,000 shares of Legat in 2010. And if you were to put that, uh, if you don't know about Legat, then please do Google that. It's very interesting. Uh, Legat and attrition, and you should be onto something. Um, so, if you run that phrase through named entity recognition, you'd come out with something a little bit like this. Now, I'm mentioning named entity recognition because it's a feature in Multigo, which is a tool I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, there's a bunch of products out out there that I mentioned in the white paper called like Open Calais and stuff like that. It's really cool. Uh, go check it out. So data visualization. This guy here has done uh, an incredible amount with data visualization. If you've not read this book, I recommend um, you go and get it. And he mentions a tool called uh, Processing, which is, uh, which is a pretty phenomenal data visualization tool if you've not used it. Um, but he also lists these kinds of steps here on the right about how you go and get uh, visual data. So you're acquiring data, parsing it, filtering 
compressing it, mine it, and then eventually you render it, and then you can interact with it. Um, well, I was really interested in this interaction piece because I want to interact with data but not leave the visualization sort of uh, uh, interface. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but check out the book, it's really good. Um, and then I met this guy here just before the talk and uh, met up with him a few times here at like Black Hat and B-Sides and what have you and uh, here at DEF CON, uh, Raphael Marty, and he's written this book and uh, he's put together this secviz.org site. Um, if you're into visualization, security visualization, check him out. Uh, he seems to know everyone in the field and uh, he's done some really great work and I appreciate him sort of reaching out to me. So these are the tools, some of the tools. It's not an exhaustive list. Um, you know, the secviz will um, show you a little bit more. Multigo processing, prefuse and prefuse flare are really nice environments as a, a Linux distribution as well, a Linux environment you can play with. Uh, but I'm going to focus on Multigo, so uh, this is where we change the pace of the talk a little bit from the science. If the stuff in the previous, in this section has interested you, the white paper will have all the references. So um, what's Multigo? Um, so Multigo is um, uh, an information gathering tool that allows you to visually see uh, relationships and uh, typically that's been like infrastructure like DNS names, web, uh, web servers, uh, IP addresses and whatnot and also human information like email addresses, phone numbers and stuff and this is really the cool bit, it's extendable by uh, design so uh, if you haven't got something in there by default you can add uh, what are called local transforms. I'll talk a little bit more about that. So you go to the uh, Perturva.com site. This is uh, written by two guys, Roloff uh, Tomingi and uh, uh, Andy McPherson or Andrew Mohawk. Uh, they were with SensePost um, originally and uh, left to create this company. And right now, this week, uh, I'm not on commission by the way, but there's a 25% discount uh, if you use the coupon code Black Hat. Um, so fire up Multigo, you get an interface that looks a little bit like this. Um, then you, uh, let's say you want to have a look at some of the domains. Um, I just chose six domains at random. You can't really read it here, but it's like Legat, Legat Security, the Cyberwars.com, and SecurityGeek.com with threes in the geek bit. And that's my website. And I wanted to see if there was any sort of anything in common with these uh, these websites. Um, so here's what the uh, here's the interesting thing about the MX records: um, High Tech Hustler, Cyberwars, um, Legat International Security, or Legat.com, all point to these. MX records, which of course could be com completely by chance, um, and their mine is off to something completely different. You can go a lot further with that then, you can sort of have a look at which websites are hosted on that domain. Um, what I also played around with, but I'm not going to uh, share here today, is that you could get all of the email addresses that appear on those um, websites as well, uh, and then you can see what other websites those email addresses appear on. So I did that, I got a bunch of email addresses, ran a transform against all of those email addresses, and found out that those email addresses appeared uh, largely in two main sites, which were attrition.org and um, pastebin. So, you know, if you know nothing about it, you'll find out something. So, okay. Um, second part of the talk really is around um, doing this sort of stuff, but with Twitter. Um, I thought Twitter was a little bit lame until I came to DEF CON last year um, and had my mind changed and thought I'd get into it. Um, there's a couple of people I started following. One of the guys was Ryan, Ryan Russell. I don't know if he's, he's here. He was heading off to the Hoff Brown House. But uh, yeah, so he's a, he's a good guy to follow, actually. Um, and another guy I followed was, uh, was this dude, Tony Hawk, the, uh, the skateboard dude. Um, I'm not sure how that happened. Um, but I got involved in something called a Tony Hawk Twitter hunt, which is basically where he hides uh, boxes or delivers boxes to people to hide um, around the world. Um, and then they send Tony clues of where they've hidden packages. And Tony tweets out the clue to all of his two million plus followers uh, and then they go around and uh, try and hunt it down. He got the idea as he's driving home one day and um 
had a broken skateboard that he uh, had it, it just wrecked and chucked it out of the window along some interstate here in the US and uh, said hey I've just thrown a board out of the window go get it and uh, a bunch of people went and, and found it so so anyway he, he sent out a tweet last year sort of after DEFCON saying I'm doing something really big um, if you want to get involved with it send me a tweet of uh, who you are where you live and why I can trust you so you know I, I did that um, and then to my surprise I got selected to you know get involved in this event and uh, I was like really excited because you know I mean I I'm pushing 40 years of age so clearly anything that's to do with like a skateboard legend and you know Tony Hawk I'm like oh yes <laughs> fantastic um, uh, which is probably a little bit sad, but my wife tolerates it because um, she's seen his house on MTV Cribs and thinks it's the uh, coolest thing she's ever seen. So I'm telling all of my colleagues at work who are who are also um, you know in security and whatnot far later than I am. Um, I said, oh, I'm doing this thing with Tony Hawk on Twitter and he's going to send me a box to my house and I'm going to hide it somewhere. The guy that, um, so, so one of my colleagues, uh, a gentleman called Pat Judor, who's sitting down here, he said, okay, Chris, so um, you've given your address uh, to somebody on Twitter who claims to be Tony Hawk and um, he's going to send you uh, a box um, which you're going to hide in a city that got rid of dustbins um, because of the IRA. Um, and, um, and there are no problems there at all, Chris, were his exact words. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and then, um, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, over dinner, he was saying, oh, yeah, that would be a really cool thing to do. Pretend to be somebody else on Twitter. Get them engaged with what you're doing. Let's say you have a Twitter ID called the real Lady Gaga and stuff and say, hey, I'm going to hide something around the world. Just need to send you a parcel. Um, you know, what's in it for you? Extra Farmville points, I think, was what he suggested. Um, so maybe it's a Facebook hunt or something. And uh, then you could really launch something quite quite incredible just by getting other people who are quite innocent to do stuff for you so I was like oh, that's a really good idea I'll mention that um, <laughs> but don't do it because that would be illegal so anyway Tony sent me this box um, undeterred by all of this is it the real Tony Hawk I'm like yeah of course it is it's got the blue tick how could it not be um, if you're not familiar with two uh, Twitter and you know if you're a celebrity or something you get like a little blue uh, little blue tick there's uh, obviously a delay because I haven't got mine yet um, <laughs> so I had to I had to hide the uh, I had to hide the box and then come out with a clue so this was my clue guarded by a fearsome troll northwest from a house where you might have to pay money to pass and a skateboard well I live sort of northwest of a toll house. That's the money. Uh, that's the house where you might have to pay money to pass. Uh, northwest of that is a skate park, and if you keep going northwest, you'll head uh, to uh, two bridges that look a, a little bit like this. So um, I was, uh, I, I hid the package under the the bridge, and at this point, I was a little bit concerned. So was my wife, um, because. Clearly, uh, the, this bridge and the other bridge are two of the main arteries uh, around our village, so uh, they're very sensitive, um, and I didn't want to get spotted. So I figured I'd do this uh, under the cover of broad daylight, um, and nobody challenged me at all, uh, which was pretty interesting. And I sent the clue out. Um, now, this guy here, uh, at Stephen Gill, who's now one of my heroes, um, he was so amped about this whole Tony Hawk thing that he drove up from a different city in the UK and camped out in Basingstoke, which is the culture capital of Europe, by the way. Um, if you've not been there, you should. Um, so he camped out there all day just waiting for Tony, who's based in San Diego, to send out a tweet. So you can imagine that Tony's a skateboarder and skateboarders probably don't get up that early, so he sent the, the tweet out, you know, uh, a little bit later. Um, and uh, he went on a mad hunt and kept tweeting, has anybody found it yet? Has anybody found it? And I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm at work, <laughs> miles away. Um, 
And then eventually I got this from him, uh, camo netting, you're a, a bad man. He'd been to a number of the bridges and hadn't spotted it because I'd camouflaged the, the box. But anyway, th this, is, um, this is what he looked like. He was a happy camper and this is what he won. Um, the IHAC Charities badge um, I put on there and uh, I thought it'd be a nice twist to add a, uh, a Union Jack flag in there because most of these packages were being hid in the, in the US. So. Um, uh, clearly, I, I don't have a life because this is what the you know this is what I what I wanted to see, and I can't explain why I wanted to see this, but I wanted to see it. Uh, I wanted to see a Google map with where all of the things were hidden, uh, who hid them, and uh, who found them, and what it was they found. So I thought, well, that'll be easy enough. Um, all of the people that hid stuff followed uh, this dude on Twitter at hiding it. All of the people who uh, found stuff uh, tweeted at I found one uh, when or were supposed to um, tweet at I found one. And Tony was meant to send out a tweet saying found with the hashtag THTH uh, with the location who found it. So I thought that would be a piece of cake. Um, I'll do that in the two hours that my you know my eight month pregnant wife at the time was going to get a you know a haircut. I thought yes I'll do that. Um, so I did what I do now. I don't use Google. I just go straight to Twitter. Um, and uh, I ask people on Twitter, I say, how do I do X, Y, and Z? Um, which is, you know, basically like read the manual. Um, but some people do actually jump in and say, yeah, this is how you do it. So this guy here, Lost Highway, who's, um, who's really helped with a lot of this stuff, he may be here as well. He said, oh, you should play around with Maltigo. Uh, there you go. Um, you can't read that, but it's not important. Go and play around with, with Maltigo. That'll do it or you can hack it to make it do what you want. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'll try it. So um, hider, finder, Google map, piece of cake, basically what I was thinking. So let's see who's friends of the, the hiders. And this is where we do this in, uh, in Maltigo. So with Maltigo, I did it this sort of um, half-assed sort of way. Sorry, half-assed sort of way. Um, what you do, you can't really see it here, but to get to like a, a Twitter entity uh, or person, um, I had to go this sort of obscure route, uh, which is where you put the phrase entity. Uh, this is all in the white paper, so I'll move quickly. You put the phrase entity on there. It was at hiding it, so I wanted to see all the tweets that I had at hiding it in it. Um, then uh, then I, I use this transform here to do that. So search Twitter with all those tweets with that at hiding it in it. Uh, get those tweets out. There they all are, the purple sort of prickly vi uh, virusy sort of things. Uh, and then convert one of those to an actual Twitter user. And uh, voila, um, that's French. Uh, for uh, You get the uh, at hiding it entity. So I was like, yeah, okay, you can do that. There is a quick ways to do that, but... Uh, I explained earlier I'm not lead, um, so I do things the long way. Actually, but not as long as Pat Udor's daughter, who was trying to um, get some uh, images off a website and wasn't quite familiar with the sort of right-click download image. Um, so she really is lead because she fired up the Fiddler, uh, which is like a web proxy to download those images, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, sorry, that's a, a tangent. Um, but not a dark tangent. Okay, um, friends of this person. So here you can you can do this. This is built into uh, to Multigo. Uh, so I can go around, select this thing. It's called a transform. Basically, what it does is transform an entity into a bunch of other stuff. So you you go ahead and click that, and then you get um, all of the people that are following at uh, at hiding it. Uh, so I picked one. Uh, here I am. Um, you can apply this to all of the entities in the graph, or uh, just one or you know just a bunch that you se select um, and I wanted to see the tweets that this person had written well that I'd written uh, and that's where this kind of thing happened actually that didn't happen I did get some results that's the fail whale on Twitter it means bad things um, it turns out there are a number of limitations with Twitter search um, first of all you're only going to get about two weeks worth of data indexed um, so if you send tweets out before that time, you're not going to be able to look at it. It doesn't index everybody. Um, 
so you were limited. So I knew that was a problem because I was expecting like 53 tweets. Uh, that was before I, I went on Twitter Overdrive, and now I'm at like 4,500, mainly complete nonsense. Um, and I only got 12 results. I was, that, that's weird. So I pinged the guys who wrote Maltigo, Roloff, and, and Andy. I was like, I'm only getting these results. And they must have been thinking, oh, God, I wish you'd go away. Um, and they tried it as well um, because I told them what I was trying to do with the Tony Hawk thing. Um, and they were like, oh, you know, that's weird. Um, we, we're seeing the same thing. I wonder what's going on. So I did some digging around, found about all these Twitter search limitations. And I thought, oh, bollocks. Um, what am I going to do? And this is where uh, Roloff said, well, you know, if you can write something um, and you can pass it uh, an argument and you can return data in standard output, then you can write what's called a local transform. Um, and Multigo have got these like forums where they've got all these examples on there. And I wrote it in, uh, in Perl. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But the concept here, if you want to analyze anything visually and you can call a script, and even I, an Excel jockey, uh, can write a script and pass data back, then you're away. Uh, you could buy this book or you could just look on uh, twitter.com and search for the API stuff that's got a ton of great information there. Um, what you'll find is that you've got three APIs with Twitter. You've got uh, a search one, uh, another one for picking up data from Twitter and the streaming um, API or the firehose. Um, the REST API, the, one of them search, the reason search is kind of screwed is because it was by another company which Twitter then bought. And this is kind of what the call would look like. So you can't see it. You don't need to, to read it. It's not that important right now. It's, it's in the white paper and on the slides. So these are the gotchas that you get. You've got a 200 tweet limit. So every time you call um, uh, Twitter, that's one API call, you get 200 things back, right? Um, uh, you can't search by date. The max history is about 3,200 tweets. And you've got a limit of 158 API calls an hour. Um, oops. So if you've got 100 people, three, uh, three API calls each, say, because you want to get tweets, like 600 tweets for them, then that's 300, and that's going to blow your API calls for an hour. So if you scale that to like looking at 1,000 people, for example, you're clearly screwed. Um, but this is where whitelisting comes in. So if you're playing around with Twitter and data mining, trying to do anything interesting with it, I'd encourage you to explore the whitelisting. Just Google Twitter whitelisting. Um, you have to apply for it based on like a static IP or a username. And then that bumps up your API calls from 150 an hour to 20,000, which enables you to do all sorts of weird and wonderful, cool things. Um, so OK, back in business. Now I want to find where the winners of the packages were. So I'll pull out Tony Hawk here. Um, and then list all of the people that Tony Hawk had mentioned in his tweets over a period of time, which was roughly sort of 600 tweets, because I figured he'd say somebody, uh, Dave, for example, found skateboard in um, San Francisco. Um, and then I'd be able to look at all of the people who were following it, hiding it in the location of San Francisco. So I did that like that. They're all the people that uh, Tony mentions, potential finders. Um, and I repeated that for all of the people that Tony mentioned. Uh, and you do that a couple more times, and you start getting a graph that looks a little bit like this. So once you've completed that exercise and done the same thing for the people hiding packages, you end up with one of these. Um, which is um, yeah, which is big. Um, so I thought at this point I saved it, and I thought, well, that's good. But I wonder what happens if I now get all of the people they mentioned in all of their tweets. Um, I know it's going to take a little bit of time, so I'll go for a run. And it was about halfway around a six-mile run, so it's about ten hours in. Um, I thought, shit, all of this stuff's actually going on on some servers in South Africa for some dudes who've given me a license key for 21 days to play around with their tool to write a blog post from a skateboarder that they don't even know about. Um, they're fans of him now, by the way. Uh, thanks, Tony. Uh, so I did that, and when I got back, uh, I was greeted with this. Um, so you've got to be a little bit sensible about what you do. They didn't come and get me or anything, because... 
uh, well they haven't done yet um, so what you do then you want to sort of reduce your graph a little bit so you can select all of the people who haven't talked to anybody else or are irrelevant and you get a much cleaner looking graph uh, and then you can play with the views of the graph so here you are here's like what's called a centrality uh, layout so you can see um, all of the people that are following at hiding it all of the people that are following or friends of Tony Hawk you can see people Tony's mentioned there and you can see people um, following at hiding it and you can see the communication between the two of them so you've already got a bit of a link they've been talking about something probably hey I hit that package in San Francisco you found it cool job um, you can also see that in an organic view where you get nice little pictures of the people that you're looking at uh, like this so here's me here's Stephen Gill Tony and hiding it and you can see that we had some communication um, then you can explore that in an edge weighted context as well so that you can actually pull out the major players uh, or major conversationalists in event so I could like look at this for DEFCON afterwards and see who, like, who had the most interesting talks and stuff like that um, in this then I found that you had uh, some dude called Jerome Case now I knew that name Jerome Case because he'd sent me the skateboard uh, but I didn't know he was on Twitter so that was quite an interesting find um, and then looking at this if you knew nothing about Tony Hawk's Twitter hunt you You'd see that I had something to do with it and you'd see that Stephen Gill had something to do with it and the reason we were mentioned a lot of times in this um, is because we wrote two blog posts about uh, my, my tales of sort of hiding the package and his tales of finding it and Tony retweeted that a bunch of times to like a million plus people um, at which point I was so excited I didn't sleep for three days um, and neither did my wife because she was giving birth um, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah that was kind of unreal so this is what Tony, Tony and, and uh, Jerome Case look like. Sweet Jerome and Tony Hawk. Um, they've been pretty awesome um, with this whole DEF CON Twitter hunt thing as well. So lessons learned. Plan what you're going to do um, because if you don't plan and you can spend a lot of time generating pretty graphs but not actually doing anything constructive. Um, take a look at this thing. It's the speed and accuracy bar. Um, if you have it slid over to the left then you get like a minimal number of results back uh, like 12 or so. And if you have it slid over to the right then um, you get a whole stack of results back so test it with it slid over to the left make sure it works when it works slide it over to the right and let it rip um, so lessons learned uh, local transforms open up a world of opportunity um, if you're in an enterprise and you're looking to do this sort of thing consider the Perturba server platform um, if you're really going to leverage the Twitter API heavily then uh, consider making a whitelisting request so uh, I did end up with the, the Google map um, we did that while my wife was in hospital and I was in hospital with her and we had a lot of time to kill we actually got the, all of the results and we, we did it by hand uh, on paper in the end um, so I, I kind of failed but uh, what was interesting is that this guy did something similar but didn't fail or suck as badly as I did um, so if you Google just landed and processing um, processing was a tool that I mentioned with that Ben Fry had done. What this guy did, um, Jer Thorpe, who I've been uh, talking to a little bit, at least in email, um, he got all of the phrases on Twitter where somebody had said I've just landed in so and so or wheels down in so and so and then he'd got their location from sort of their Twitter profiles and then he'd mapped the two and found you know sort of where, where these people were flying from and to um, you know and so on and drew this really pretty map in processing where the things actually sort of bounce around there's like a, a nice video of it uh, so if you're trying to model sweet data then that's that's it um, and then uh, I used the same stuff that I'd done with um, with the, uh, the the Tony Hawk thing I applied it to a, a UK charity this is a digital equipment corporation although they were a fine company um, this is a disasters and emergency charity in the, in the UK um, and they wanted to do some social media analysis using a, you know what they've done with Twitter and the peak there is the uh, number of tweets that were retweeted at the same time as the earthquake in Haiti so um, if you really want to see how the pros do it, follow uh, Dacourt or Damon uh, Cortesi, who's uh, responsible for tweet stats and rowfeeder.com. Um, what he does is in incredible. So, okay, so I'll switch gear to a slightly different context. Um, and you've got uh, 419 crimes uh, in Nigeria. Does anybody know who this dude is? 
there's a reason why I'm asking. It's because I can't remember his name. Uh, but he he wrote a song called um, "I Go Chop Your Dollar," which you can you can Google, go have a look at, uh, which is basically um, a, a kind of anthem to a lot of people in Nigeria uh, about 419 scams. So um, it, it's I think it's like the third biggest income generator for Nigeria and made like 9.3 billion dollars last year. Um, so let me just start with a quick disclaimer in case anybody hears from Nigeria and wants to knobble my knees in the car park. Um, the only way you can tell the truth is through fiction, which uh, I spotted on one of Richard Theme's talks, uh, and I'm a Richard Theme fanboy, I make no excuse of that. So all of the events, names, images and stuff like that that you're about to see uh, have been kind of cobbled together in a fictitious way way that's going to protect me from being bumped off by Nigerians um, who want to bump me off, basically, uh, or want to bump somebody else off and confuse me with somebody else. So, okay, so meet, meet Jess. Um, Jess sold uh, a laptop on a popular auction site. Um, it got bought quickly at the buy now price, and probably a lot of you are thinking, well, um, if you buy anything at the buy now price, then it's obviously a scam. Well, you know, if you don't know that, you don't know that. Um, so she exchanges email with the buyer, so far so good, except she's got a strange name like Larry the Cable Guy or something like that, but in the UK we've never heard of like Larry the Cable Guy, so how is she to know that there's anything fishing going on there? Um, then she gets this uh, notification from PayPal saying, you know, your funds have been cleared, you now proceed to send the uh, send the goods. So she sent her laptop to a valid address in the UK. Now she was fairly smart, so she checked the ex you know the, the address existed, right? Um, and she did that, and then she got a notice from the auction site saying, "Terribly sorry about this, but uh, your uh, the the account of the person that you sold the stuff to appears to have been hacked, um, and uh, it's probably a scam." And of course, at this point in time, her laptop was winging its way to another city in the UK. Um, so there was little she could do apart from contact the police. So if this happens to you and you're in the UK at least, I don't know how it is in the US, don't contact your local police force, contact the police force of the place that the package is going to arrive in because they can get around to the house, knock on the door a lot quicker. Uh, she didn't do that and I'll explain a little bit more about what, what happens there. So another hypothesis um, was that if I got this, um, the scammer and I got the address of the person uh, that, um, you know, got the, the person who's, who received the stolen goods and would be able to retrieve the laptop and uh, get them busted by 5-0, I believe. That's what they're called here, right? Um, we call them the police, but I'm, yeah. <laughs> Clearly I'm down, so, uh, and gangster. So, okay, so where is our, our scammer? Uh, I thought, right, well, I need to get the email header, but he or she uses webmail, and I uh, haven't figured out a way to do that very easily. Um, so I thought, well, could sign up for a blog site like this one, and there's a number of them out there that are free and don't require any identity or anything like that, where I could host a, you know, an, an image. Um, and then send the spammer uh, an email with that embedded image in it, which would you know, have a, uh, a, a random name, but be something compelling. So I'd send him an email saying, hey, I've got this other laptop. I just sold you one, but I've got this other one. Would you be interested in buying this one too? And sure enough, um, after doing some of this, he, uh, he responded and said, mm, yeah, I might be interested. How much? Um, so I went back to the uh, visitor logs here and saw the IP address of where he came from, which was Lagos in Nigeria, or at least that's where he'd routed his connection through. But I figured that he probably wasn't likely to be rocking tour at the time. Um, if you want to do a proper bang up nice job of this, then uh, I'd recommend seeing some of the stuff that Jeremiah Grossman's been talking about this week, which I haven't seen, so he might not have been talking about it, but he did some sort of browser uh, vulnerability stuff where he was able to uh, convince people to click on a link that would give up all sorts of things that they'd put in the autocomplete forms stuff. 
stuff. Uh, if anybody has seen it, you can probably set me straight, but it looked pretty cool from the description and a nice way of getting more data. So here's our scammer. Um, so now, where did the package really go? So we've got the scammer, NS is the Nigerian scammer. Here's all his details. And Alice is in Newcastle in the UK, or at least that's where the package went. Now in the UK, got a site like this called 192.com, which tells you who lives at what address, um, except it didn't work because uh, she was probably renting or didn't live there anymore. So, okay, I don't know if anybody else is uh, familiar with this song, but I heard it the other night, and uh, if you haven't, you should Google Alice. Alice, who the is Alice? And um, it's a pretty groovy song, actually, especially if you've had a couple of beers at the Hofbrau House. Um, or any other drinking location, there are plenty. Uh, so information, in information gathering, searched on Google, found a bunch of um, sort of social network sites where she was, including that one there. Um, so I wanted to apply the same techniques I did with the Tony Hawk thing, but for... Um, uh, for, for this scammer. Now, um, because I'm not lead, uh, I looked around for ways of doing this and I found that this guy here, uh, Dominic White, who I was fortunate, for, fortunate enough to meet a black hat, uh, really is lead. He's called at Singe on Twitter and he wrote some really cool transforms for Facebook uh, based on Python mechanized beautiful soup, which would do a whole bunch of things with Facebook. But if you see there at the end, they'd break the Facebook terms of service, so don't use them. Um, it's only anecdotal evidence but I've heard that they've got really big dogs and they know where everybody lives. Um, so if you do break the terms of service, then they'll come after you really hard and bust your nuts, basically, unless you're a lady, in which case they'll probably let you off. Um, um, or bust, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. Um, so which Alice is there? Because there's a lot of Alice's on social networking sites. Um, here I've listed three just so that we could simplify the diagram. Um, so which one is it? Um, we list all of the friends for uh, for Alice based on this uh, conceptual Facebook to friends uh, transform. Uh, we see where her friends live to give us a, a better idea of um, which one, you know, if she's got any connections with like Nigeria, for example. Uh, we do that and we see, okay, this is Alice here out of all of them is one of the Alices that's got connections in Nigeria and in this place in the UK called Newcastle. Um, they pronounce it a little bit different, but I'm not Geordie. Um, but a fine city anyway. Um, so that helped me at least narrow down which which uh, Alice it was. So here's, um, here's a video or a talk that was done by a chap called Pete Warden um, called How to Get Sued by Facebook. Uh, this is really cool and makes me look kind of lame. Uh, again, uh, there's a theme here. He built his own sort of social network search engine. Uh, which was essentially a hundred machine uh, Hadoop cluster for about ten dollars an hour uh, and he crawled Facebook. Uh, he retrieved 220 million profiles, uh, name, location, email, in 10 hours, and as he puts it on his website, for $100, uh, which was pretty awesome. Uh, but he ended up in a whole bunch of hot water with Facebook, um, and it's really not the sort of hot water anyone wants to um, you know, land in, because they, they really are aggressively going after people who are scraping their sites. Um, so don't do it by asking them nicely, even if you're law enforcement, because there's a whole bunch of laws that uh, protect people there. But 220 million, I thought that was awesome. Check him out. Uh, he's done some really cool stuff. He was looking at where people were, you know, who was talking to who, in which states, which parts of the country, um, and who was moving around and stuff like that. And it's very, very interesting stuff, and it's all out there to read. So, okay, so what information is out there on Facebook? If their privacy is set to everyone, then you're in. So, I mean, you know, or public profiles and what have you. Um, if not, then you can only do so much about being a friend. Uh, so, okay, so. So how do you, um, you know, show me the, the good stuff essentially? Well, you could create some bad applications, see the Social Zombies talk that was at DEF CON two years ago and then I think ShmooCon and whatnot last year, Social Zombies 2. Um, that's really some great ideas there. Then there's the whole, uh, you could just be friends with them, Satan is on my friend list. Um, go and see that one. That's maybe DEF CON a couple of years ago. Or you could just be smart like the Harmony guy who's found various sort of books and things in Facebook um, and, and do it that way. But you're 
you'll get busted by, by Facebook. So, okay, making new friends, um, possibly create a credible account, uh, build up your identity, don't guide directly for your target, uh, join similar groups, universities and whatnot, uh, then friends of friends and stuff like that. If somebody's got a thousand friends, then they're going to be really easy um, to friend with. So you could you could do that. Uh, take your time. Uh, I didn't do that uh, because I... I couldn't be bothered waiting, so I did all that in about two hours, uh, which isn't a good way because it really exposes you just being random, but people obviously don't seem to care. Um, or you could automate it, which is pretty much what I did, and uh, get all of the nasty business over with quickly. Um, so will you be my friend? Um, that's kind of how my intros went, sort of thing, and it was like, hey, how do I know you? Um, at which point I thought that. Uh, I've been I've been busted, <laughs> clearly not uh, a Sean Moyer or whoever the those guys were. Uh, so I, I sent this back and said, I'm a friend of Alice's. I'm sorry, I'm just getting started with Facebook clearly, and I really don't know. I probably just went a little bit too far there. And she was like, Oh, well, that's cool. Well, Alice is my best friend. So if you know Alice, then you've got to be cool. Oh, sweet. <laughs> um, so. Um, <laughs> Building, um, building a map of interesting people. So here's what I did really, get the friend, get the location, uh, get the, lo if the location was Nigeria, Lagos, and a bunch of other places in Nigeria, then I'd want to see wall posts and uh, photos, um, download any interesting photos, or just download all of them with a name and uh, if they were interesting I wanted to pipe the results back to Multigo so I could you know get a map so um, you you know here's like a Facebook to friends transform uh, which generates a map like that and you keep doing that and eventually you get a map like this or a graph like this which shows you the bigger dots are the more interesting people um, the red circle thing in the le bottom left is uh, the UK and the top one is Nigeria so it's pretty interesting um, and then you can see graphs like this which you, you can't actually see the connections but they're all joined and the bigger dots are more exciting places to have a look well Nigerian criminals make a lot of money um, 7k in five days was what I found and if you look at the sort of Facebook profiles and stuff like that lots of money flashy rides um, expensive chicks no um, expensive clothes hot chicks hot expensive chicks um, hot expensive luxury chicks and um, uh, they're easy to spot because they're like yeah man um, really uh, Really, they're not ballers on a budget, um, which was a phrase I heard this year. So, uh, and then you saw like status updates like this. Uh, I get paid in pounds, but collect in Nigeria. Lots of pictures of um, uh, Western Union. They party hard, um, like ninjas, um, but less leet, uh, or maybe not less leet. Actually, who cares? They do it. Um, Western Union pictures. Um, so, you know, what's the attraction? Well, base salary or average salary in Nigeria is like two hundred dollars, four thousand in the U.S. So, obviously, um, there's also a lot of a lot of history there. I ramble through this quickly because I've got like five minutes. But uh, I saw some pictures like this, but not these ones. So, if you Google duffel bag full of money, you'll find out where this picture came from but there were other pictures uh, out there and you can google them some of them looked a little bit more like that but they weren't those ones because otherwise I'd get bumped off um, and then there was stuff like this as well um, that's actually my laptop this morning uh, no it's not um, <laughs> Clearly, I'm using a Mac, and I don't drink whatever that is. Um, but then I saw lots of pictures of Nigerian dudes with these things, which is, I believe, the Americanism for gun, right? Um, I may have got that wrong. Um, I want to get through the, the rest, so links with uh, Terra. Uh, there's an organization called uh, Ultrascan Advanced Global Inter Investigations. Uh, they're based out of Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Amsterdam. Um, and they're really the experts in this field. They've done a lot of research in there, and they got a 2009 paper which uh, noted that 2008, 2009, there was direct evidence linking advanced fee fraud networks to, uh, um, to, uh, to terrorist activity. So, okay, true identity of the scammer. Hey, this is Alice. I sent him an email from uh, a different account. Will you be my friend? Sure. I'll post a note on Facebook because I'm, um, I'm having some problems. Sure. Uh, thanks. Hot stuff. Um, say hi to X. Um, that's the scammer saying that. And X was a friend of hers on Facebook. So now I had a little bit more of a, uh, a link. This is the link that I saw um, on um, Oh, we've got plenty of time. We've got five minutes. This was a link that we saw on 
on uh, Facebook. So the, the scam was like, hi, sort of thing. Uh, so I was like, right, bingo. We got the connection between Alice and the Nigerian scammer. And because he said, say hi to XXX, which then found out that was like Alice's like man uh, or what have you. So we had like this interesting um, connection now where you had Nigerian scammers all sort of hanging together. So... Um, scammer networks, how do they work? Um, on record at least, you've got 62 different Nigerian crime cells in the UK. Um, Spain's the highest in the world with 72 uh, organized crime cells. The Uf USA uh, is 53, but don't feel too bashful because you've got like 2,500 people in those 53 cells, uh, twice the number of anybody else, and 916 uh, around the world, lots of members raking $9.3 billion a year. So how would you get paid? Uh, so you could compile all the information into a, blog, into a blog post or create a Facebook fan site saying this person stole all my stuff, I'd kind of like it back. Um, then you can email the scammers and say, um, if you don't, you know, if we don't reach an amicable agreement, then Google's going to, you know, index this and it'll be there forever. Uh, follow up with a call. Uh, see Jason Street's talk from yesterday. How you could do that anonymously. Agree amicable terms. Uh, so then they're like, okay, how do I send you the money? It's like, well, um, cash, bank, PayPal, Western Union are all going to get you whacked. Um, the other one might not, uh, but there's a limit on there. So, okay, let me end with a health, health warning. Messing with criminals can um, reduce your life expectancy. So um, to do that, you're either limited to public information due to the terms of service. If you friend up with people with your own profile, which is the only terms of service compliant way to do it, you'll need uh, balls of steel. Um, if you work with law enforcement, then you're okay. Um, uh, but you you'd still have to break the terms of service and Facebook will come after you. So uh, mining data has been, is more accessible than ever before because there's so much of it out there and it's a lot of fun. Uh, visualization can help you hone in on uh, interesting relationships and uh, any arc and you know, name density recognition can help you classify it. Combine all three of those and you're on to uh, some interesting stuff. Um, if you're on Twitter and you want to see who's tweeting about Maltigo, uh, at Paterva, uh, at Singe, Mubix and Khan Lonage are all far, far smarter than I am. Um, social network tweeters, Tom Eston, Robin Wood, uh, Agent 0x0, Digi Ninja have done the, you know, the uh, social, uh, social zombies talk. Harmony Guy, follow him, he's awesome. And social media security. And then um, data mining visualization, Damon Cortesi, Neil uh, Codner, if you follow, uh, if you you tweet full metal jacket um, then you get like the sergeant major dude from uh, full metal jacket giving you crap on Twitter um, try that it's funny that's Neil um, Pete Warden's the dude who nearly got sued by Facebook and Raphael Marti and Secviz are the same person um, uh, and awesome guy so um, that's about all I've got to say about that um, I'm in room what is it one 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 or something okay um, and that's a website, it's got the white paper from the talk and, and stuff like that. So that's all folks. Um. <laughs>